Good afternoon, everyone. Our service this afternoon marks Her Majesty the Queen's 95th birthday. And so on behalf of the Chairman, Professor Herbert Kerrigan QC, and Trustees of the Thistle Trust, may I welcome you once again to the Robin Chapel here in Edinburgh for this celebratory occasion. The order of service used today will reflect that used at St Paul's Cathedral on the occasion of Her Majesty's 90th birthday. Our preacher will be the Reverend Neil Gardner, domestic chaplain to Her Majesty and minister of the Canongate Kirk in Edinburgh. Our lesson reader will be Dr Peter Duffus of Aberdeen. Sunday the 13th is also the day following the 81st anniversary of the fall of the 51st Highland Division at St valery en coe on 12 June 1940. Dr Duffus' father, Dr Ray Duffus, a then medical practitioner in Aberdeen, was a medical officer with 153 Brigade Field Ambulance and was captured at St valery I am Dr Ian Barclay, the chaplain. As on previous occasions, we are ably supported by our worship group, being the voices of James Slimmings, our director of music, Sally Carr, one of our lay clerks, and Callum Robertson, our assistant organist. We pray for Her Most Excellent Majesty, Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, Sovereign of the Most Noble Order of the Garter, whom may God preserve and bless with long life, health and honour, and all worldly happiness. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Robin Chapel Music Group will now lead us in worship, singing to the glory of God, the hymn 201, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness, from Church Hymnary, 4th edition.
obedience and incense of lowliness bring and adore him, the Lord is his name. Dear friends, we come together to give thanks as one family under God for life in all its fullness, for love in all its power, for joy in all its wonder. Most especially today do we give thanks for the length of years that has been granted to our most gracious Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, for her faithful devotion, dutiful commitment, loving leadership, gentle constancy, royal dignity, and kindly humanity. And as we give thanks for Her Majesty, so also do we give thanks for her royal family, for their mutual love and support, and for service to this country and to the Commonwealth. Rejoicing at our good fortune, we nonetheless pray for those in need, the lonely and the despairing, the sick and the fearful, the weak and the oppressed, that each precious life may be redeemed by love of God and love of neighbour, that together we may share in one another's joy. At these thoughts and prayers, let us offer up to the throne of God in the words our Saviour Jesus Christ commanded and taught us, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Our first anthem today is O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands, based on the words of Psalm 100 and to a setting by Sir William Walton.
Son Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, reigns at your right hand in glory. We give you humble and hearty thanks that you have granted length of years to our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, and have given her gifts of faith in your promises, hope for the future, and love of her people. Send down upon her, we pray, the continuing dew of your blessings, that she may ever incline to your will and serve you with joy and grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It now gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Peter Duffus to read the Old Testament lesson from the first book of Samuel and the epistle from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Our reading from the first book of Samuel, chapter 15, at verse 34 to chapter 16, at verse 13. Hear the word of God. Then Samuel left for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him. And the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Samuel anoints David. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil, and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what to do. You are to announce, anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked him, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. 
But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So we asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Amen, and thanks be to God. The second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 to 17. Therefore, we are always confident, and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. The Ministry of Reconciliation since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you the opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is rather than is what is in the heart. If we are out of mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Let us continue to worship God in the singing of the hymn, Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. In Church Henry, third edition, where it can be found as hymn 90. Thou didst feel its keenness. 
dreary, faint and weary, through the desert thou didst go. Spirit of our God descending, fill our hearts with heavenly joy. Love with every passion blending, pleasure It now gives me great pleasure to invite the Reverend Neil Gardner to read the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Gospel according to St Matthew at chapter 28 and beginning at verse 16, the account of the commissioning of the disciples. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always. To the end of the age. Let us continue to sing our praise to God in the hymn 364, King of Glory, King of Peace, from Church Hymnary, 3rd edition. me great pleasure to welcome our preacher for the day, the Reverend Neil Gardner. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the Gospel according to St Matthew at chapter 28 and verse 20. Jesus said, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. It's a pleasure to be with you, even at a distance, to help mark Her Majesty the Queen's official birthday. The second year in a row, the birthday parade, otherwise known as Trooping the Colour, has taken place on a much reduced scale in the quadrangle of Windsor Castle. And it is very much to be hoped that by the time it comes around again next year, 
as part of the major celebrations of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, normal service will have resumed on Horse Guards Parade in Whitehall once more. But wherever it is held, and whether full scale or otherwise, at the heart of Trooping the Colour lies a military tradition that dates back several centuries to a time when the regimental colours were deliberately marched past the troops so that they might recognise them in the heat of battle and rally to them, especially if they had become scattered and separated. It was a tacit acknowledgement that things would not always go smoothly, that in all probability there would be times when the best laid plans would gang aft a glee, as Robert Burns once put it, and soldiers fighting the enemy in close combat would become separated, isolated even, from their own side. At such times it was imperative that they would be able to recognise their own colours, the very symbols of their own regiment, and find in them a clear rallying point at which to regroup and from which to go forward. And so before engaging in battle, their own distinctive colour would be marched slowly backwards and forwards in front of their eyes. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, Jesus told his troops in the closing verses of St Matthew's Gospel. And it must have felt to those disciples as if they were about to go into battle, on the same side, but not necessarily always together. They would become separated from one another. They could become isolated from one another if they were to follow strictly the instructions that Jesus was giving them. In fact, there on the mountain to which Jesus had directed them, he comes across as every inch the commander issuing his orders before battle commences. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, he reminds them. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. He commands them, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And just when they would be at their most anxious, at their most uncertain, at their most nervous, remember. I am with you always, to the end of the age. And there the gospel ends with that wonderful reassurance. There is no more to be said, nothing further to add, not when the last word is an eternal promise. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. I don't know about you, but one of the first hymns I'm looking forward to singing when it's allowed again is the old Scottish paraphrase of Romans 8, The Saviour died, but rose again. The second verse asks, Who then can e'er divide us more from Jesus and his love, or break the sacred chain that binds the earth to heaven above? I wonder if it's a question that might have echoed in the disciples' minds as they contemplated life without Jesus amongst them, as they prepared to follow him in a different way to when they'd first left their boats drifting in the water and their nets hauled up on the beach, now to follow his commands, his unavoidable commands and his impossible demands to make disciples of all nations baptising them and teaching them and establishing the church all over the world. What a terrifying prospect. Let troubles rise and terrors frown and days of darkness fall. Through him all dangers we'll defy and more than conquer all. I wonder if that's a sentiment that might have struck a chord with the men of the 51st Highland Division as days of darkness fell over St Valerie in June 1940. They'd gone into battle, but their best laid plans had gone aglee, and they found themselves hemmed in, with no chance of evacuation or support. They were exhausted and almost entirely out of ammunition, and shortly before 10 o'clock in the morning of the 12th of June, 
the decision was taken to surrender and the 51st Highland Division was taken into captivity. Let troubles rise and terrors frown and days of darkness fall. Through him all dangers we'll defy and more than conquer all. We've all been through our own days of darkness these last 15 months or so. A different sort of captivity, a different sense of separation, but one that requires us, even as we emerge from it, to look around for a rallying point at which to regroup and from which to go forward. And we need look no further than the closing verse of my favourite paraphrase. Each future period that will bless, as it has blessed the past, he loved us from the first of time, he loves us to the last. And remember, said Jesus, and remember I am with you always to the end of the age. And now may God bless to us this preaching of his most holy word, and to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all praise and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. With the psalmist, let us call upon the name of the Lord and give thanks for all that God has done, that the hearts of those who seek the Lord may rejoice. God O oh, glory, we give you thanks for bringing us to birth. Let our mouths be filled with your praise, that we may sing of your honour all the day long. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of light, God our light. We give you thanks for festivity and celebration. Refresh us as we rejoice together that we may know life in all its fullness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our King, we give you thanks for the 95th birthday of Elizabeth, our Queen. Sustain and strengthen her that her reign may continue to bless us all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our strength. We give you thanks for the support of others. Bless her family and all who surround her, that this birthday may be a day of happiness with others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our Saviour, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, your Son. Enliven the Church, his body in the world, that it may be united in his love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our guide, we give you thanks for those who inspire us. Encourage all people of faith that together we may embrace the future you have in store for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our maker, we give you thanks for the world in which we live. Help us to tend and care for it, that all life may enjoy the fruits of creation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our judge, 
We give you thanks for all who strive for a better world. Give us your gift of peace, that war and terror may be no more. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our deliverer, we give you thanks for those who rescue us. Save all who are in trouble, that today they may be free. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our refuge, we give you thanks for our homes and families. Strengthen the communities from which we come, that together we may care for each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our shepherd, we give you thanks for the hope of heaven. Receive into your care those who've gone before us, that they may take their rest. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of glory, we give you thanks for bringing us to birth. Let our mouths be filled with your praise, that we may sing of your honour all the day long. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the 95th birthday of Her Majesty the Queen, receive our heartfelt thanks for all that you have given her in these 95 years and for all that she has given to her people. Continue, we pray, your loving purposes in her and as you gather us together in celebration, unite us also in love and service to one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our music group will now sing to the glory of God the anthem, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace a blend of words from Isaiah, the Psalms, and the first book of John, to an arrangement by Samuel Sebastian Wesley.
Lieutenant Colonel Neil Morrison will now lead us in the act of thanksgiving. Our act of thanksgiving. For the faithful devotion of our sovereign, we give thanks and praise. For her dutiful commitment to her people, we give thanks and praise. For her loving leadership of nation and family, we give thanks and praise. For her gentle consistency amidst continuing change, we give thanks and praise. For her royal dignity in joy and in adversity, we give thanks and praise. For her kindly humanity to one and all, we give thanks and praise. We give thanks and praise for these divine gifts given to our gracious Queen yesterday, today, and in the years to come. Amen. Our closing praise today is Psalm 100, All People That On Earth Do Dwell, to the traditional tune, The Old Hundredth, set to an arrangement by Ralph Vaughan Williams. It can be found in Church Hymnary, 4th edition, as the hymn 63. into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.
God Save the Queen. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send God save.